are watching Love Talk. If you are joining me for the very first time, this is a live television show and uh, the lines are open for you to call in and ask your questions about what works in your relationships in your life and uh, with other people, whether it's in your friendships or your husbands and wives or if you're dating or engaged or married. One of the things that we struggle with the most as human beings is how to relate, how to communicate with people, how to engage with people in such a way that we actually uh, move the issues and the problems that come up in our lives forward rather than causing injury or disempowering or hurting other people or ourselves or allowing other people to hurt us. I want to give you some resources, particularly a lot of men and women are watching these shows and I noticed that really one of the beliefs that my wife and I have had from working with men and women for you know thousands of men and women over over the last seven years that we've been in this business together is that the source of relationship, I mean the real, the glue that holds the relationships together when they work and sometimes the explosive that blows them apart when they don't work is the women. Now I'm not uh, uh, saying that men aren't responsible, don't get me wrong, but the women have the power to create relationships, to hold them together, they're motivated to, they are the natural sources of relationship. And you know, this is true for a number of biological reasons as well as uh, social and economic and cultural reasons that have developed uh, and, and anthropological reasons that have developed throughout time. And uh, without going into all of that, women, are the source of power in a relationship and therefore the, the source of civilization because our civilizations are built upon steady or stable relationships between men and women that produce civilization. I'm Connie from London. Hello, how are you? I'm okay, thank you very much. How are you? Great, thanks for watching my show. Good. Thank you. This is the first time I'm watching your show. I've been recommended by a very good friend of mine in London. Okay, great. Um, I have many, many questions to ask you, but huh. one of them is that I don't know how to explain it, but the problem is that, unfortunately, I have lost um, my ability to make friends because I used to be so warm and so outgoing and so friendly, and now I'm so down and so depressed and... So what happened? Don't want to be with anyone. I mean... What happened? I don't know. I've just had some kind of a family law. Well, something happened. I mean, you didn't just go from being warm and friendly to being cold and distant and, and unfriendly all by yourself. Something happened, some event, some a significant emotional event. So I want you to just look because there was a, a significant emotional event that had some emotional charge on it and it happened. What was it? Well, as I said, I lost a, a very good, I mean, I lost my mother. Okay. How old are you? I am 46. And how old were you when you lost your mother? Um, four years ago, nearly four okay. years ago. So you're a 42 year old man and so you lost your mother and that's kind of to be expected, isn't it? Um, Yes, but the mm -hmm. thing is, I had nobody else except her in my life. So then you weren't all so friendly and warm after all, were you? Because uh, if you were, you would have a lot of friends. You wouldn't say, that's the only person I have at the age of 42. No, I did have plenty of friends at the same time. But the thing is, when I lost her, I was maybe somehow expecting a lot of support from friends. Mm -hmm. and I didn't get it, so that's so, why I just... What would it look like if you had support? From everyone. What, what would it look like if you had support? In other words, if your friends supported you, how would you know? Well, I mean, I expected them to spend time with me. Okay, so, and nobody did? They just left you alone? That's right, exactly. Okay, so that your friends left you alone shortly after your mother died. Nobody called you or came over or offered to? No. No. Okay. No. Did you call them and say, hey, my mom died, I want to hang out, I, need to, I don't want to be alone? No, I didn't do that. I thought, mm. because I automatically did that for my friends when it happened to them. But they didn't do that for you? No. Okay. This is why I just... So, did that, what did you make that mean? You made that mean something. Yes, I made that mean that, you know, people only want to be with you when you are happy and jolly and 
dancing and jumping up and down. Not well, when you really are down and when you... Mm -hmm. I understand. I, 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 I can see how you would make it mean that too. Now, does it actually mean that or is that just some meaning that we attach to? Because so here's what happened. Your mom died. That's to be expected when you're 42, right? She's going to die someday and... So she probably been alive a long time by the time you were 42. So were you completely unprepared for the fact that she was going to die one day? In my mind, yes. Okay. I never thought it would. I mean, I obviously, as a human, to live, you expect your parents are going to go. But well, yeah. You know, somehow in your head, you don't want to believe it. You don't want yeah, to accept I understand. it. You think seems unreal. You know, yeah. It's not going to happen to me. It may happen to the people next door, but not to me. I understand completely. I understand how people... So you and I, people, human beings, for the most part, kind of live our lives a little bit disconnected, sort of at a mm, disassociated, like, this is not my real life. My real life is someday, over there, out there, yes? Like, I know my mom's going to die someday, but not today. Uh, I know that one day I may become ill, but not today. Or I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be rich someday. Or I'm going to be happy someday. Or I'm going to be uh, uh, 10 pounds lighter someday. So, so my point is, dear sir, is that, is that you and I, human beings, one of the conditions of humanity is that, is that for the most part, human beings live their life like right now is not it. You know what I mean by it? Yeah, it's, it, by I it, do. I mean it's not my real life. My real life is... When I'm 10 pounds lighter, a million dollars richer, and everybody loves me, and I'm happy. That's, that'll be my real life. But right now, this is my practice life. This is, this is not my life. And for the most part, we live our lives that way. And I'm, 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 going to, I'm, I'm going to make a point here with this because really all you have is right now. So those days when your mom was alive, she was just alive. And then there was a moment when she was not in her body anymore and she's gone and you still were here. That moment is just as good as the moment before it and just as good as the moment after it. In other words, the, the ability to be happy, fulfilled, and uh, have personal well-being is always with us. It never has anything to do with, really with anybody else or Another way of saying that is you could live your life that way. You could live your life like it's 100% my responsibility to be happy, to be well physically, emotionally, spiritually, financially, socially, in every way. My access to that is really getting present right here, right now. And then there'll be some things that will begin to arise that there is to do, like call those old friends that didn't show up when your mom died and, and maybe have a conversation with them saying, you know, when my mom died, I was really counting on you. You weren't there. It hurt my feelings. And I've sort of cut myself off from you and other people. And, and I'm done with that now. And I want to be a part of life again. I want to come back alive. I want to, I want to be here. I want to, I want to enjoy the moments that I have in this world. And uh, I'd like to share some of those moments with you. You'd be surprised what would open up for you if you had a conversation like that with someone. Oh, absolutely. They would open their world totally. up. They completely. are trying very hard. They are. They really are. Mm -hmm. and, and I bet you they are. And, and, and somehow, because of the meaning, not actually what they did or didn't do, but the meaning that you added to it. And, and I don't mean this like you're bad. That's the only thing you could do is add meaning. You and I, human beings, what it is to be human is to add meaning to the circumstances in life. You know, so, you know, if we step on something in the street and get it on our shoe, we make that mean something, right? Absolutely. Yeah, that means something about society, about me. It's, in some places it means, oh, I'm going to have good luck. And in other places it means, oh, you know, I, I'm going to have a terrible day. You know, it, 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 people add meaning. But the truth of the matter is we never actually have a problem with the actual thing that happened. We have problems with the meanings that we give it. Does this make sense? Am I, am I getting through? Uh, it, uh, it doesn't actually mean anything that your mother died. I know that sounds harsh, but it's just true. She died because, you know, her time was up, and that's just what's so. And, you know, it would be weird if she didn't die someday. That would be strange. So I understand that there's a sense of personal loss and that you miss her and all that. I'm not, you know, overstepping that. I'm just saying if you could put that on the side for the moment and just say, okay, well, it was kind of normal that my mom died. I mean, how old was she? She 
life was 80. Yeah, pretty long life, yes. You and I should hope to live to 80. That's a good life. I suppose, yes. Yeah, good a life. good life. Yeah, good life. I mean, you got to have 44 years of having a mom. Listen, my mom died when I was uh, when I was 13, I think. 13 or 14. And uh, so, I, you know, I was 44 when my mom died, you know? But, you know, that's, so what? It, it You come to terms with it by saying, well, that was kind of normal. I miss her. You can put that aside for a moment and say, and my friends didn't call, and I didn't call them either. And so give yourself some space. It is normal to have a mourning period, a period where you mourn the loss of someone. And there's stages to that that you can, you know, I won't go through all of those stages right now with you, but but there are stages to mourning, and one of them is to withdraw and to be uncommunicative and to feel some sadness and cry. And then, then, you know, then there's another stage where you begin to reach out or people reach out to you and so forth, right? So you, you are possibly at that stage. And how I know that is that you called all the way from London, you know, that you turned on this TV show today instead of watching whatever, cartoons or anything else that might be available right now. And it's late at night over there. You know, what time is it there? It must be about 3 or 4 in the morning, isn't it? Time is it? Oh, in London, it's nearly 12, 12 okay. at night. Yeah, okay, so it's about 12 midnight. And uh, and you're watching this show, and uh, you, you call to to talk about this. So you reached out, you know? That's a good thing. You know, you took some action. Yes. Yes, it is. Yeah, you it took is some action. Because I really want to know what do I do now? Because well, I've I, just I would call up us for so long. Call up some of those friends that you've been Into it. avoiding and uh, say, hey, you know, it's been a long time. I've, I've kind of gone through a mourning period. I think, I, I, I think I'm done with that now, and I'd like to, I'd like to get back in communication and, 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 and get back into my life. And, you know, you've, you've always been a dear friend to me or whatever's true for you. And, uh, you know, let me take you out for coffee or something. Let's, 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 let's meet and go to a movie or, or, or whatever sort of light entertainment that would allow. I wouldn't suggest a movie because then you just sit there and be in the movie. So, you know, someplace where you can go hang out and talk. London's a great town. I love London. And it's it's full of wonderful places to go see and have a have a tea or a coffee or something and 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 just chat with your friends and get back connected with them you know okay thank you so much for your time and your advice well thank you thanks for calling thanks for watching and uh i i wish you all the luck call me up sometime and let me know uh, how that turned out okay thank you very much i will show for sure do that okay good day Good night. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Bye-bye. Bye. Hello, this is Gregory. You are live on the air with Love Talk. Hi, Mr. Morgan. I have a question. Thank you. Okay, I got it. What is it? I have a friend. I have this problem with her. That, like, for instance, my husband lost the job, and I was kind of, I was in a pain, and, you know, problem. I was talking to her about it or any kind of thing. No, all of a sudden, I decided to buy a house, and she's so mad of me. She takes it really hard that, how come you never talk to me about something that is very, it's happening to you very happy moment, like a big heart you're buying and something great that is happening to you. And this was going on and on and on. Now you're just telling me that you're buying a house and, and you're excited about it. So I told her, I said, I'm a private person. I don't want to say everything about my love to you. But she still doesn't believe it. She said, if you share it with me, with your pain and sorrow and mm -hmm. whatever is in your mind of telling you, you, ha you should have shared with, with me your happiness and your buying a house. And you know what I mean? It's so why didn't you share with her? And, I, and, and don't tell me it's because you're a private person. Because, I, you know, really... What, what was it? Is it because of the Persian custom of fearing that somebody will give you the evil eye if you have some kind of good luck? No. Oh, you're so cute. No, it's not that. It's just that I didn't know if it's happening or not. And mm -hmm. that was a big, uh, I mean, buying a big house and everything, it's a big, it just happened. Mm -hmm. I got the money and I made everything, you know, comfortable. I was thinking about it and uh, I just didn't want to talk about it to her unless if it's happening. Well, okay, but over in her world, you need to get, I mean, I, 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 I'm guessing that the reason that you're calling me is that you want to know if there's anything that you sh should or should not do about this. I mean, obviously, it's something that troubles you or you wouldn't have called. No, my question is, what do you think what she's saying is right? Well, I don't, I don't think she's right or wrong. I just, I, I'm trying to get over in her world. In other words, when you were depressed and bummed out and, and unhappy and broke, right. you called her. Now, I don't suppose that brought any joy to her life. Right. I don't suppose that brought any moments of, uh, 
rejoicing. In fact, if she cares about you, I can imagine easily that it may have caused her to have some worry or upset or discomfort or sadness for you. If she cares about you, I could understand how your misfortune or, or hard times would, she, she shared them with you. Now, that's what I'm hearing. Tell me if I'm wrong. And then, you know, when things got good, you kept that a secret from her, depriving her of a moment of happiness and rejoicing and sharing in your good fortune and perhaps relief on her own part because maybe she was worrying or praying for you or whatever out of her concern and caring for you. Right. So I could see how that might feel like a bit of a, a betrayal perhaps, or, or, or certainly, you know, I don't know how deep your friendship was with her, how much you shared with her, her or burdened her with your sorrow and your, your depression and, 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 and your bad times, but, uh, you know, it might have been a good idea to throw her a bone whenever you were having a good time. Yeah, she really wants me to talk about all my private life and everything, everything to her. Well, you know. A person she's, and I don't like that. Okay. I don't want to talk about it unless it happens. I understand that. I mean, I, 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 I totally understand that. I uh, grew up in a family in which uh, we did not talk about financial things to people uh, except maybe our banker or something, you know? I mean, it was like your finances were private, whether they were good or bad. They were just, you know, that was something that, that a gentleman doesn't talk about, you know? And that's what I learned from my father in any case, who was not a wealthy man. He was just a middle-class businessman, but uh, he just, you know, you know, it's like you don't talk about that stuff. You don't ask people how much does that cost or how much money do you, do you make or how much does your house cost. It's just like none of your business. It's, it's just a question of being polite. At the same time, though, if you're going to share all your sorrows and heartbreaks with somebody who's going to sort of stand beside you and be supportive of you while you're sort of in the mud and maybe help you up or encourage you or pull you up, when you win, when you have a win and you have a success, it's their success too, you see. It, 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 they, they, they feel that it is their their success. Have you ever helped somebody and they were down and then they got back up and didn't you feel some kind of happiness and pride about that? Like you somehow participated and or at least you were happy for them? Right. Yeah. So, you know, you, you, you kind of deprived her of that. And you don't have to tell people the details of your life. I understand. So there's a, perhaps a, a certain line to keep, a certain boundary to keep in which you don't talk about the details of your life. But, you know, you could say something like, well, you know that hard time I was going through? I just had a breakthrough, you know? And it looks like those hard money times are over for a while. And in fact, I've just had the good chance to uh, come up with enough money to, uh, you know, put down a deposit on a house and you know, I look forward to having you over to my new house and thank you for your support all these times when I wasn't so doing so well and, you know, let me take you out to dinner or something. I have this you feeling know? I think she's jealous. Well. She's jealous about the, this. That's her problem, though. It's not yours. If people are jealous of you, you can't do anything about that, except that if people are jealous, you don't want to go flaunting your things in their face that you know intentionally is going to make them jealous. I know people who do that. They go to the other side. They go, well, I've got this and this and this and this. And if you're jealous, that's your problem. That's very egotistical. <laughs> it's kind of disgusting. You know what I mean? Right. So there's, in all cases, there's a, there's a middle road, a fine line, a, a, a balanced way of being in which you're just simply straightforward and honest. And that which you don't feel comfortable sharing, you don't share. But if somebody's helped you through the, through the hard times, it's not that you owe them, but you might consider that it might make them happy that your hard times are over and that you're having a good time now. And why wouldn't you want to make them happy since they tried to make you happy, you know? Well, what what is uh, bothering me is she's trying, now lately she's trying to talk about my family, which is not to bring them down. Like my father, my mother, my parents, like where she come from and all that to my friends. Uh, I, it shows me she's trying to put me down, bring me down. Okay, That's well. why I think she's jealous because jealous people, they this way they can make themselves feel better about themselves if they can bring somebody else down. That's what I'm trying. Well, jealous people lack self-confidence. Jealous people have low self-esteem. Jealous people uh, don't think very much of themselves. And so since they can't pull themselves up out of that, they lack the, the wherewithal or the tools to, to see what's great about them. Uh, they lack the insights to know that uh, anything that you can accomplish, they can accomplish. And they lack the self-confidence to do that, then what's left to them in an attempt to try to feel better about themselves is to bring somebody down to their level. And that's always easier, isn't it? Because all you have to do is lie or gossip about them, and even if it doesn't actually bring them down, it appears to. That's what she's doing. 
doing now. If you value her friendship at all, then you have to confront that directly. Directly. Um, that's what I want to know. What should I do about this? Well, if she's really your friend, yes. okay. Now, I've lost some friends in my life over this kind of thing, and I've gained some deep friendships over it, too. So I let people sort themselves out. You know what I mean? Well, my conversation with my friends, and, and listen, the only reason I have the, the ability to say what it is that I'm about to tell you is because I do not listen to gossip. I won't put up with gossip. If I hear somebody gossiping about somebody else, I don't want to hear it. I don't participate in it. If there's a bunch of people sitting around gossiping, I try to say, change the subject, and if they're not wanting to change their subject and talk about something more positive, then I leave and go someplace else. I just won't be a participant in anything that diminishes another human being. Because right. a, a my whole life is about empowering people, so why would I then go and be inauthentic and try to disempower somebody? Even if I don't like them. I, there's people I don't like. It doesn't mean I love everybody because I want to empower people. There's people I flat out don't like. I just don't gossip about them. <laughs> Do you see what I'm saying? I don't tell other people about anything about them. I just keep it to myself. That's between me and them. You understand? So I'm saying to you that if you want to deal with this, if this person is really your friend, then she won't have a problem hearing something like, Hey, I understand or feel or heard. Don't, don't make accusations that you can't back up. I have a sense that you are gossiping about me and disempowering me behind my back. Am I right? And just let her say yes or no. Right. And then you look in her eyes and find out whether she's telling the truth. Because you know, right? You're a woman. You know when somebody's lying to you, right? And just say, look, I value our friendship. You were there for me when I had hard times. But this is one thing that I will not tolerate is having you gossip about me behind my back and if you're doing that I, I request that you stop immediately and that you go clean up whatever mess you've made in, about my reputation with other people me my family or anything like that I, I, I demand that you clean that up as a condition of us being friends and if you can't do that then you and I are gonna have to go separate ways because I, I won't tolerate that so it's better if I say something to her than having a on business with her. Really Consider what? the alternative. Consider the alternative. The alternative is you act phony, she acts phony, she continues to gossip behind your back, you think less and less of her, she thinks less and less of you, but you put on a phony face and pretend that you care about each other when in fact uh, you're in a very poisonous relationship that, that's, that's disempowering. I don't have any tolerance for people that like to put a little poison in my tea when I'm not looking. Do you? You're right about that. How much you're poison right. do you want in your soup, you know? Yes. I want zero, right? I don't have time for people empoisoning my environment, you know? What if you, you know, had a swimming pool and every time you invited this person over, they peed in your pool? <laughs> and you just keep swimming like everything's cool, right? Right, you're right. Yeah, I don't want any of that. You know, this is the environment that you live in. The people that you meet on a daily basis, the people that are in your phone book, the people that come to your parties or that you see at other places or dinner or around town, that's like the, the water in your swimming pool, if you will, right? That's the world that you're swimming around in. That's the water that you're drinking and bathing in. Yes? yes. Now, either that water is going to re nourish you and replenish you and clean you and make you uh, happier and healthier and better every day, or it's going to kill you slowly, right? You're right about that. Yeah, so if there's a source of poison in your life, you you know, you owe it to yourself and to them to say, hey, cut it out. I won't put up with this. I don't put up with this. You're yeah, right. Yeah, th this, this doesn't work for me, and I demand that you go clean up whatever you said about me behind my back. If you've said something that diminished me in somebody else's eyes so that now when they see me, they have some kind of secret background conversation about me that's disempowering, and, and, and instead of seeing me in the fullest light as as is the awesome being that I am. Uh, they're seeing me through some little uh, lens that you put. I demand that you go clean that up. It takes courage to live like that. And I can't tell you that it makes you very popular because most people in the world are living in a world where we're playing a game called, I will never call you on your BS and you don't call me on mine, okay? And that's the unspoken agreement that people live in, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. I'll never call you on your inauthenticity and your little lies and all the little stuff that you do that, that's destroying your life and mine. I'll, I'll pretend that's not there as long as you pretend the same thing about me. Deal. And that's the unspoken deal that we've all learned from our families, which are codependent relationships, uh, addictive codependent relationships, because we fear and we believe that happiness and fulfillment comes from other people. So we pretend 
to be something we're not in order to get some happiness and fulfillment that we're never going to get because other people can't bring you happiness and fulfillment. It only comes from you. Yes, you're right. You know, and it comes from you and your ability to keep your environment clean and clear and straight and, and as fulfilled as you can. Now, can you ever really do this? The truth is no. Can you ever clean your house so clean that you never have to clean it again? Of course not, right? Yes, you're can, you, right. you can never eat so well that you never have to eat again. You can never take a shower so clean that you never have to do that again. In other words, life gets you dirty, doesn't it? It gets you dirty, it gets you tired, it wears you out. And so a warrior lives a life of constant, never-ending improvement, self-sharpening, self-tuning, cleaning the environment, dealing with what there is to deal with, and bringing as much happiness and joy and fulfillment to life as you can because you can, because you actually can. But if you're waiting for it to... If you're waiting for it to come from somebody else, mostly what you're going to get is lies and gossip and BS and all the lazy stuff that people do because that's the that's the world we live in. Unfortunately, that's how it is right now. Please, if she's a true friend, she should be happy for me. If she's a true friend, she'll go, wow, you're so right. I'm so sorry. You know what? I apologize. I will clean it up. That's what a true friend would say. I've had a few friends, very few in my life, when I've confronted them and said, you know, I know that you said this, that, and the other about me to that person, and I want you to go clean that up. I, I request that you go clean that up and come back and tell me when that's done. So you think I should give Very few people chance? will do that. Most people will lie and say they didn't ever say that. So then it's up to you whether you want to continue to have a relationship with them or not. Listen, I've had relationships with dogs that I know bite, right? Mm. Yeah, now I know this dog bites, so I know I don't go stick my hand over by their face, right? <laughs> but you can have a relationship. You just got to know where not to go. And I think that your qu original question is, well, I didn't tell her about the happiness that I'm having in my life because, uh, I don't know, apparently you didn't trust her enough to tell her that. But I don't, I just in general, there I may be to something to clean in up in your own... To there, anybody else, you know, what friend, any friend. Well, it, there may be something to clean up on your own part about how, listen, I, you were really there for me when I was down. You were supportive. I, I told you all those things that were happening in my life that I was unhappy about, and you stood by me. And listen, you know, I didn't tell you when something really hap happy happened for me. And, you know, I apologize. I'm sorry. I should have included you. You know, there may be. I don't know. You have to look for yourself. I don't want to put words in your mouth, but there may be something for you to clean up. There may be something for you to say, like, well, I wasn't sure if I could trust you with this good news. I didn't want you to go tell everyone. There may be something like that, that if you just look for yourself and your, in your own honesty with yourself, is there something that I could have said or done or that I, uh, it, did I hold her in some way that was disempowering? Have I gossiped about her? You're right about that. Yeah. Thank you very, very much. Okay, thank you for your call. Uh, the lines are open, and I'm going to go ahead and take your calls. Hello, this is Gregory, and you are live on the air with Love Talk. Hello. Hi. Hi, Hi how are I you? I have a um, question regarding okay. if you have seen a man for a few years, and if you, you have? feel like you are attracted to this man, and uh, you would like to... Well, I'm a, uh, uh, hold on a second. I'm going to interrupt you just a little bit because I want to correct your language, okay? Because you said if you were seeing a man and you were, but I think you're talking about yourself, right? Yes. Yeah. So I have been seeing a man for a certain number of years and I am attracted to him. That will make it a lot more real. Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. I'm sorry. That, well, it's just more so real, isn't it? I have it? seen a man mm -hmm. and I am attracted to him in yeah. the beginning. Actually, I could say he was attracted to me as well, mm -hmm. but um, uh, but I never see any you know anything going on you know like uh, I, I I don't know if we can work on it or um, is he not he's not approaching you in some way or is it uh, is it that uh, you know he's attracted but he doesn't show it or what's what's the deal if i was watching with a video camera from a you know up above what would i see <laughs> yeah you can see zero nothing <laughs> nothing <laughs> it's like you know you can't see any you know any any um any um how how should i say anything that uh, you would feel like he would like you or he would no. want he you. would like you but um, Somehow, spiritually, you know, I feel like he wants me. You know, I don't know. Maybe I'm lying to myself. Well, that's a good question. But that's a good question to ask now, isn't it? Because sometimes uh, we, we call that in my trade, uh, we call that a mind read, right? Mind read means... A mind uh, read, like you're reading his mind, right? 
Yes. You, 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 we call it a mind read because he didn't say, I really care about you. He didn't buy you flowers. He didn't propose to you. He didn't come over and take you out to dinner. He didn't hold your hand. But you feel that he, he likes you. He hasn't made any indication whatsoever. That's why I ask you, if I was watching with a video camera, what would I see? Would I see him smiling at you a lot? Would I see him driving by your house in the middle of the night to see if you're home? Would I see him calling you on the phone? What would I see? In other words, if I if I didn't know if I was a Martian and I saw this man and I saw you, how would I know that he likes you? Um, somehow my heart tells me that, as you said, maybe the way he looked at me so many times, or the way he cared for me, you know. How did he care um, for you? And how did he also, care for you? How did he care for you? What did he do that showed you that he cared? I was in a trouble, and he helped me a lot, you know, to have me get out of that trouble. Did he buy you something? Did he take you somewhere? Did he, you know what I'm saying? He helped you. Did he talk? Did yes, he listen? Yes, he, he, he talked to me a lot. Okay. And, uh, he uh, comforted me a lot. That's how he cared. How does he comfort you? Does he comfort you by talking and listening on the phone or in person? Does he come over? How do, it, it, in I, I, you're making in me work person, awfully hard. But to, not, you know, holding hands or anything, touching, you know. Just so talking. is he just being a gentleman? A gentleman. Is he just being a gentleman? <laughs> okay, I don't know, you know, it's, it's so many years and every time I want to put him aside and say if he really wanted me, he would do something by now. Uh, my heart doesn't allow me, and even if I see anybody, I can't, um, I don't have an open heart for that person. Have you let him know, I either did. verbally or physically, by, by showing him with your eyes, with your body, or something, have you let him know that you really care about him? I have done that. Uh, even I have given him a, a small note saying that, but he never he didn't uh, respond. gave me any answer. Okay. Either he's scared to death of you. Sorry? Either he is scared to death of you. <laughs> <laughs> like he's afraid, uh, he's afraid that if I, if I get involved with this woman, I'm going to end up marrying her and she's going to have my children. And I'm not ready for that. I had that experience with, with, with my wife, Azita. I, was, I, I knew her, I met her, but I didn't talk to her because I knew that if I got involved with her, I would fall head over heels in love with her and that would be it on me. <laughs> and I wasn't ready for that. Oh, how long it took you to get ready? <laughs> oh, well, let's don't talk about me. I was, <laughs> took me about, <laughs> took me about three years. About three years? This yeah. is longer than three years. I don't know why it's taking this long. <laughs> well, I don't know. Maybe that was fast. <laughs> Maybe three years was fast for me. I don't know. I worked on myself to get myself ready to be a husband again. I had been married and I was divorced and I knew that it was no way that I was going to be married again anytime soon. I had some processes to go through in order to learn about myself as a man and to learn about women. And as a matter of fact, it was during that period that I learned so much. I'm now considered a, 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 an internationally recognized relationship expert. I'm still learning. It's, it, you know, it's 12 years later and I'm still married to Azita Sion. So believe me, I'm still in the advanced university of, re of relationship skills learning every day, <laughs> right? <laughs> either he's scared of you, either he has an interest in some other woman. Either he's not ready to get married or be, be profoundly in a relationship uh, it, or he's just not interested. You know, you have to consider all those possibilities. So in my end, what do you think? Should I, you know, keep working on myself to be uh, the way that I think he would like me that way better or maybe, you know, learn about him more and no, more definitely. and still stay to see hopefully I get some answer because he never rejected, he never said yes either, you know. Yeah, he's, he's sitting on the fence, but he's, he, he, listen, if you've let him know in no doubtful terms, in other words, it's, he's not sitting over there thinking, I wonder if she likes me. You, you've answered that question for him, right? I guess I have done yeah. that. Yeah, you've answered uh, that question for him. I don't know if he wants more or because it wasn't very, you know, it was very a very simple way to tell him that I like him. 
Okay, but it, I, well, I, I understand that it was probably demure and coy and sweet and like that. In other words, you didn't do the American girl thing like, uh, hey, you're hot, right? <laughs> you know? and, you know, no. yeah, I'm sure you did a very sophisticated Persian version of uh, letting him know that uh, you were interested in him and that you were available. That's, what, that's about what you need to do is let him know that you're interested in him and that you're available. Yes. So okay. Is it any way that I could, you know, get to his heart more and more? I don't but know. But don't change because yourself. Because you were talking about woman has a lot of power. Yes, you she know? does. Yes, she does. But, but, but in nature, the female becomes available and attractive, yes? Yes. And you have some kind of, like, psychic magnet that I know that you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Because I've had it put on me before by women. It's like I can't think of anybody else, right? I know that you have some kind of a psychic magnet that you have uh, and, and, and that, that you are able to uh, let a man know without being aggressive or pushy, but just simply available and attractive. I'm here, I'm available, and I'm interested in you. You, right? Now, one of the things that we teach in the uh, is something that we call intentional flirting. Now, everybody flirts all the time anyhow, right? We're always exchanging little cute looks and jokes and things, and that's fine, and that's sort of a, like an innocent kind of flirting that's, that's, that's uh, normal. Innocent exchange of sexual energy that we do with our eyes and with words and laughter and all that. That's fine. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about intentional flirting, and I'm going to tell you how to do it right now, okay? Okay, thanks. For all you women out there, and this is going to go against, you know, everything that you've learned as Persian women, but I'm going to teach it to you. You need to look at a man straight in the eyes like this for five seconds. And five seconds seems like an eternity, I, I'm sure. One, two, three, four, five. And then smile and look away. Oh, okay. I'm telling you, if you look any less than five seconds... You're telling, him what, you're telling him three things. You're telling him, if you look at him for three seconds, you're telling him, I see you looking at me, so I know you're interested. I've checked you out, and I'm not interested. So if you look at a man for like three seconds, one, two, three, and then you look away, in his brain it goes, oh, she didn't like me. Or it gets too afraid to go talk to you. Or maybe she likes me, but I can't tell. But if you look at him for five seconds and smile, then it's up to him. If that doesn't get him out of his chair, across the room, and over there asking for your phone number, or can I, you know, meet your mother or something, then he probably doesn't have the courage to do that. So five seconds straight to his eyes, and, and it's smiling all the time. Just and smile. Yeah, you don't have to smile the whole time, but make sure you smile before it's over. If you just stare at him for five seconds and then look away without smiling, you'll think you're a weirdo. Okay. You gotta smile, right? The smile tells me, tells him, I, you know, I like you. I think you're attractive, or I'm available. I'm, I'm easy to talk to. The smile lets people know that you're available, that you're that you're a happy person, that you're available, right? Right. If you just look at them like that, they think, uh-oh, what's going on here? Right. <laughs> <laughs> that's one thing. What okay. else I should do? <laughs> that's it? <laughs> well, that's the, first, that's the first step. I can't teach the whole thing because I only got about two minutes left on the show, but that should get something going. You don't pursue. Now, you've sort of dropped, used to people would drop their hanky, right? The la ladies would drop their handkerchief and men would gentle, pick it up and smell it and say, oh, you dropped your handkerchief, right? Now they drop like, uh, you know, their iPhone or something. <laughs> okay. You know, their computer breaks down and they say, can you fix it? You know, or something like that. <laughs> but uh, beyond letting him know. Now, the other thing that I would recommend to you, since you seem to have a lot of thought on him and, and you said you can't open your heart to somebody else, I would recommend to you, dear lady, is that you do go out with other men. You know, platonically, you don't have to be sexual or affectionate with them, but go and have a good time. Go out to dinner, go to a movie, go do things so that you're not sitting around waiting for him to call. And also, it wouldn't be such a bad idea if he found out that you were going out, not necessarily from you. Do you see what I'm saying? Yes. <laughs> if he found out that you were like going out with other guys and he's about to miss his chance if he doesn't step up, that's one side of it. And I'm not saying to do that as a manipulation. I'm saying to do it for your own peace of mind so you're not sitting around waiting for him to call. The other thing is, what if he doesn't call? What if he does go out with somebody else? What if he never calls... At least you've got some people that you're going out with and having a good time and, and having a relationship with. You got it? Yes. 
Yeah, so you're not sitting around waiting for him to show up. And then keep your intention on where you want it to go. And if you've let him know that you're attracted, and uh, available, friendly, and approachable, don't pursue a man. That's why I'm telling the ladies, don't go after a guy. I know that that's the deal in, the two in, the, in, in you know, 2010 is that women pursue men. Don't do that. Don't do that. And there's a whole bunch of reasons why that I explain in extreme detail in the 12 stages of romantic relationship. Buy the CDs, okay? I'm not on here to try to sell you CDs. I'm here to try to educate you. And that's a very inexpensive way to get a lifetime of, uh, of, uh, of information. I've just been listening to them myself in the last couple of days because I'm doing this seminar uh, next week. And you know what? They're good. They're good. It's great information and everybody should know this information. Okay? So you can get those online at embracegrowth.com. They're very inexpensive that and my wife's book girl talk and you you'll you'll have all the tools you need okay so 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 i get the uh, uh, 12 stage of uh... the 12 stages of romantic relationship it's a it's a two cd set okay okay and then my wife's book is girl talk if you want to get that that's a book and it's in english or farsi and you can buy the two of them together in a package deal for very inexpensive okay i appreciate okay? that Thanks. yeah Thank you for your question and for watching my show. I know that there are other people on the line. Uh, if you want to stay on the line, I'll try to take your call for a few minutes right after the show, but I need to close the show now. Thank you for watching. This is Gregory Morgan. You've been watching Love Talk. See you back here next week. The Embrace Growth app is finally here. You start by signing in just as you would online. And from there, you'll see all of your account settings. Once in the app, you'll have access to events and all of Embrace Growth's original content. Registering for workshops and seminars is easier than ever. 
and tools for managing your profile and options are built right in. Schedule private sessions and connect with the global Embrace Growth community. Download it today on the App Store. یک مرد منحصر به فرد مسلط، متمرکز، قابل اعتماد و رضایتمند چنین مردی باشید به ما در مسیر رسیدن به قلب مردانگی بپیوندید و خود برترتان را درون خود بیابید کارگاه شرافت، عزت کلام و مهارت به رهبری دکتر آزیتا سایان ارائه شده توسط شرکت امبریس گروت در ایروان نهم تا یازدهم آگست همین امروز ثبت نام کنید و شاهد تحول زندگیتان باشید Welcome to the Embrace Growth app. There's a new way to communicate and join in. Create your free account online and sign into the app. Manage your profile on the go and choose between English or Farsi. Register for events and schedule appointments more easily than ever. Stream audio, video, and download books all over Wi-Fi or cellular. Sign up for workshops and seminars right on your phone and access your audio and video library in the palm of your hand. Take your favorite lessons from Dr. Ozita Sayan and Mr. Gregory Morgan with you. Download it today on the App Store. Embrace Growth has a new home online where you can easily register for workshops and events, order from the online store, and be part of the worldwide community of Embrace Growth graduates. You'll be able to see Dr. Rosita Zion and Mr. Gregory Morgan in your favorite seminars. Visit us today at embracegrowth.com. Welcome to the all-new EmbraceGrowth.com. You'll have access to all the content you love at the click of a button, videos of seminars, events, and the ability to sign up for workshops, direct access to digital downloads right from your mobile devices. Stay in the know and see our latest graduate events. Watch your favorites anytime, anywhere. Visit us today at EmbraceGrowth.com. A haven for the weary soul. A source of inspiration and community. Redesigned to bring you meaningful experiences and unforgettable events. We are a worldwide community of vibrant individuals displayed in the people who are a part of it. From many nations, backgrounds, and beliefs. Through powerful outreach programs, the struggles of everyday life are confronted and conquered transforming those who participate into the best versions of themselves. One-on-one -on -one sessions are available to keep you headed in the right direction, coupled with the best resources to remind you how to live, whether at home or elsewhere. Programs designed for men, providing the building blocks of maturity, commitment, integrity, and leadership, paving the way for productive and fulfilling manhood. Beyond an understanding of masculine leadership, is its application in daily life and development into something truly unique. Exclusive training for women, encouraging growth and empowerment through an acceptance of their true identities, redefining interactions and changing the viewpoint through which life is seen. Embracing the woman within and accessing facets of your personality hidden beneath the surface. Showing our youth the value of integrity and reliability by creating an indwelling desire to succeed with honor, basing the future on a solid foundation of ideals that will guide them through life, leading by example, and showing others how to clearly convey their thoughts in a compelling way, creating a culture of mature leaders who can help others achieve self-confidence and their goals. Real people and real lives are changed for the better. With every event, more are touched and come to an understanding of their place in this world and their community. Embrace Growth is run by a passionate team and led by the diligence and inspiration of Dr. Azita Sayan and Mr. Gregory Morgan, who consistently teach life lessons based on what works rather than the passing fads of the times.
در کارگاه های آموزشی بانوان به رهبری دکتر آزیتا سایان با دستیابی به اهمیت و ارزش واقعی خود قدرت زنانگی و آرامش خود را بازیابید محیطی مناسب و حیجان انگیز برای رشد و شکوفایی عشق، ازدواج و خانواده خلق کنید زنی شاد باشید، قلب مردان را بشناسید و آنها را درک کنید. کارگاه آموزشی بانوان، ایروان سوم تا پنجم می، لس آنجلس 25 تا 27 می، تورنتو 8 تا 10 جون. برای ثبت نام در این کارگاه ها با شماره 310 460 2600 تماس بگیرید. برنامه دنیای عشق و دکتر آزیتا سایان برنامه ای که تمامی سوال های شما را جواب می دهد ازدواج، عشق، سکس، همجنسگرایی، فرزندان، والدین، خیانت از یوتیوب لایف، لایف استریم، فیسبوک و اینستاگرام لایف سه شنبه ها و پنج شنبه ها ده شب به وقت ایران و ده و نیم صبح به وقت لس آنجلس تلفن تماس با استودیو 818-532-6655